Diamond and the Fosters, a story about families. Written by Michael David Weiss. Prologue. So my mother, she calls me, so happy and proud. She had a special gift in mind for parents to read aloud. She wanted me to write a book, a book about a tree, a book about the newest branch of a brand new family. She wanted me to pen a gift about my uncle and his wife, whose home became a foster home and how it changed their life. A book about a mom and dad who suddenly had a daughter, a poem about a foster kid and what new love had taught her. So I offer up this humble tale to foster character, a song we sing for Diamond Deer, a song we sing for her. Chapter 1. Diamond's Family Tree The wind was blowing and starting to swell, a sound dear Diamond knew far too well. The storm was a-coming, like it did every night, when foster mom Kathy would turn out the light. The storm blew in her hair, and it blew in her ears. It tumbled her pillows, and fueled by her fears, it would toss her around like a rag of a doll and dear Diamond had nothing to hold on to at all. So night after night, she'd roll and she'd tumble, till the roar in her ears was reduced to a mumble, while the storm that would always begin with a shout would rage and would rage till it blew itself out. Then, only then, with her hair full of leaves, with bumps on her head and a scratch on her knees, back to her bed she would dreamily creep, and Diamond, dear Diamond, would fall deeply asleep. One morning, which came almost like a prize, when the storm had left nothing but some sand in her eyes, Diamond used both hands to wipe the storm dream away, and awoke to what would soon become a very special day. Foster dog Kopi arrived, and in her own special way, with licks and with kisses, she seemed like to say, Diamond, 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 give your spirits a lift. Someone who loves you has sent you a gift. Yes, a present had arrived in the form of a plant. It was a gift from Diamond's new foster aunt. From Annie, with love, was written on the card. I've sent you a gift to put in your yard. Diamond was excited, and her smile set sail. She loved it when presents would come in the mail. She ripped open the box with the wind at her back, and she pulled out a stick in a brown burlap sack. Diamond held her gift with lessening joy. It didn't look to her like a very fun toy. It was boring and brown, like the color of dirt. Nothing more, just a stick, wearing pants but no shirt. It's a tree, said Diamond's foster dad, Mike. It just looks funny because it's not planted right. We'll get us a shovel and put it in the ground, then watch as it grows up all the year round. So Michael and Kathy and Kopi and Di went out back beneath the blue Idaho sky, and they dug a small hole and watered with the hose. And when they unwrapped the bag, Diamond asked, What are those? Those are roots, said Kathy, holding a small mossy mound. They feed the tree from the soil underground. They also help out in ways you cannot see. Roots are a very special part of the tree. Trees have roots that hold them in place when the wind bends their backs and throws rain in their face. Standing through storms, no matter the length, trees can stand tall because roots give them strength. Now, the tree was planted and was given a spark by Kopi, who gave it a whole lot of bark. And as the sun set, glowing red as an ember, Diamond's family held hands round their new foster member. Diamond thought to herself, It seems clear to me there's something special about that tree. And as she watched it and sat under its shade, the trunk, it grew thicker with each passing day. The leaves grew so green there was no need for concern. 
Diamond watched them without worry. Diamond watched them without worry till the bad dreams returned. The fears began to grow. The dreams of long ago where the storms would be churning and starting to blow. And Diamond would dream herself swept to and fro, caught up in a wind that would not let her go. The storms came and they came almost every week. The wind in tornadoes, the rainfall in sheets. Diamond went to bed, knowing just how she'd feel. Then one night, she woke up, and the dreams, they were real. She dreamt of wind hitting her, driving her back, and with water and sleet, she was hopelessly trapped. In panic, she wrestled and let out a cry, and to her surprise, when she opened her eyes, the wind, it was really blowing on her face, and there was thunder crackling all over the place. A real storm was raging, and her windows were wide, open to the rain forcing itself inside. She screamed, and she ran quickly out of her room and down the hall into deepening gloom, when all at once she tripped and fell flat to the floor and came face to face with what she'd seen before. Outside, through the glass, she could see in the dark. The tree she had planted was bent to its bark and its branches were waving, but all safe and sound, because the tree was rooted so well to the ground. And she thought to herself, Wow, what a sight. No matter the rain, no matter the might, that tree just stands there and isn't afraid because of those roots and how deep they are laid. When Michael and Kathy and Kopi came in, they were very surprised to see such a grin on Diamond's face as she let out a shout, Come sit here with me! I found something out! So they all sat together right there on the floor while the rain and the wind continued to roar. And she told them of dreams she repeatedly had, how they would make her feel fearful and sad. But now things were different, yet still the wind blew. No matter the weather, Diamond learned something new. She said, People have roots that hold them in place when the wind bends their back and throws rain in their face. Standing through storms, no matter the length, people stand tall, because families give them strength. Now Michael's and Kathy's jaws just dropped as they listened to Diamond's wonderful thought. The tree and the roots had the power to affect her, she knew that their love would now hold and protect her. So after sweet kisses on her sweet foster head, dear Diamond stood up and marched right off to bed. Storms would no longer push her around. Foster love would root her feet to the ground. She'd face those dream winds like the tallest of trees. Nothing to be scared of, just a bend in the breeze.